it came together in different pockets. There was sort of different groups of writers working in pairs or threes, or in some case, solo. Um, so we worked on some stuff. We, as, as a three, worked on some stuff. You two worked on some stuff. Charlie wrote some stuff. And I think all the ideas sort of started to seed in these little pockets um, <clears throat> over a period of a year or two. And it, when we all got together in February, that's kind of when all these ideas were finalized. And we had a sort of full-blown week of finalizing the arrangements, uh, getting all the vocal ideas down. So it kind of grew quite organically, slowly, and then we had everyone together for those final stages to sort of make sure everybody had a, a final say on every aspect of the album. That was roughly the process, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. And that's the, the first time we've ever done that. So we've had a whole week of intensely just working on songs together in one space. For like 14 hours a day. Or... Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So we, had, we hired out a place and we turned the, the living area into a makeshift studio. And yeah, for like 15 hours a day, we were just Intense. kind of slogging it out, kind of throwing ideas at each other, singing melodies, uh, playing riffs and melody lines. And yeah, that's really where the, all the songs really got glued together. And we left that, that whole week with pretty much the structures yeah. fully there, I will say. And then we kind of went home and just recorded proper demos of the songs. Actually, that was the first time we'd, we'd kind of been together post-pandemic. Um, at that point, it was kind of impossible to travel back and forth, as everyone knows. Mm. But um, yeah, so we, we got to the point where we, we had basically fleshed out instrumental songs, you know, like everything was kind of mapped out instrumentally. And then, yeah, we uh, hired a house for a week. Um, Remember where it was? Oh, I don't know. Uh, somewhere, it, it was, somewhere, somewhere in the Surrey. Surrey yeah. yeah, it was kind region. of a nice <laughs> setting with like trees and yeah. it's like a, a beautiful kind of remote kind of place. Mm. And we could just we just kind of hung out there for a week and and really I think that really consolidated the, what the album became. You know, we, mm. we kind of went through every track kind of step by step and like rearranged things and. And put vocal ideas on. Yeah, it's where all the structures came together yeah. and the vocal melodies were fleshed out, yeah. uh, which everyone participated in. And uh, we came away from that week yeah. with, well, we were really happy with the sort of the bones of the album. That's, that's the fun yeah. part where yeah. you sort of play past the mic, where it's like <laughs> we just have like one yeah. microphone, and if someone has a vocal idea for that section, they'll just kind of do their best to sing it, and then Ross will come and sing it properly later on but mm -hmm. it's like it's just a good way of like mm -hmm. everyone throwing an idea onto the song so it's, it's just a it ends up as being a, a Haken song and not just like a an individual person yeah. I, I don't think we went in specifically with any sort of preconceived notions of like concepts or anything like that um, we, we always kind of let the music do the talking to begin with and just let it, I guess, develop organically. Um, and maybe that then starts to determine what concepts or themes we might want to develop within that. But I don't know, I mean, did, did you guys have anything specific? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't early on from what I remember, but we obviously had this overarching theme of animals, which is why the album's called Fauna, which is why Ray's wearing a sloth jumper <laughs> there. <Nice. laughs> Um, and then we kind of looked at how certain plights and stories of certain species in the animal kingdom uh, reflect us as humans and our societies and civilizations. Um, and then we kind of ch like use that as a, a springboard to, to write our own ideas. And that's how a lot of the concepts for each individual song songs were developed. The thing sort of like, like lyrically, mm. musically, I guess there was a, a there was a theme of bit of a theme of experimentation like oh yeah 100%. death from the beginning and sort of freedom I guess not trying to categorize what the album would be like too much um, and that did like precede the like lyrical themes but I think that was there in, in all the writing sort of like like sessions that we had I think we were just exploring and seeing what what sort of new sounds can we create um, and it was you know to be a later task for us and then bring that into something coherent, which is kind of what we did during that week. But I think that was also 
a theme, if not directly a theme to do with the lyrics and stuff, but that was a theme in the album process from the beginning. Mm. And it's something we throw around quite a lot. This is our most eclectic album to date. <laughs> we say that all the time, but I really do think that this is our most eclectic album. And every song really does stand alone. There's, we have songs like The Alphabet of Me, then we have songs like Taurus, and they couldn't be more opposite, really. Yeah. Taurus is very kind of gritty and heavy, whereas The Alphabet of Me kind of leans towards almost like indie pop, pop sounds, yeah. like bands like Everything, Everything, which we all really love. Um, so yeah, so there's a real mix of different sounds and colours throughout the whole album. And I think that was, I think we, yeah, that that kind of led into the album theme of Fauna and like it, it, it not being a sort of concept album in terms of a story, but it being exploring these different facets of Animal Kingdom and how that can like relate to humans. That that was always going to be a naturally quite eclectic thing. Yeah, because the Animal Kingdom is very varied and eclectic for want of a better word so I think that's how those two things kind of like marry together thematically in terms of the lyrics we had this idea um, to allow every song to have a, almost like a spirit animal have its own identity because um, we've, we've we're known for doing concept albums uh, recently anyway like with, with narratives running throughout and I think you know we discussed amongst us that we wanted each song to have its own identity and attaching a spirit animal to each song was a starting point for um, how we approached the lyrics. Um, so that I would say that was a key. Yeah, yeah. I think I think early. I think we kind of started with the title actually this time. We kind of had this the word right. fauna as <clears throat> a cool sounding album title, and uh, yeah, we thought that would, sometimes that changes later on, um, and, you, and it becomes something else. But in this case, it remained as that. And yeah, lyrically, we, we kind of looked at this using like the animal kingdom as inspiration to explore, you know, ideas. You know, it could, it's not that every song's about an animal. It's um, kind of inspired by that or you know, mm. our, our links to the animal kingdom. Yeah. Well, Charlie's just released a solo album which is incredible, and Dan did the artwork for that album. Um, and he said that he was the greatest guy to work with, and just look at what he did on my album. And we were like, wow, it's incredible stuff. And Dan's also a fan of Haken, and he had, has been for a while. Um, so yeah, it just naturally fell into place, and Charlie kind of took the reins of that, and Dan just really went above and beyond and just spent so much time on all these really small details, which you'll see in the artwork <coughs> of the album, but it's it's really impressive stuff, and I think it kind of reflects the, the sound of the album really well. Like you were saying earlier, there's such a varied mix of sounds on the album, and with the artwork as well, it's very eclectic. Yeah, I think that was the sort of conscious decision to make the art quite busy. Um, again, to be something quite visually striking, um, and to sort of complement the music in that way. Um, so I think there was a desire to have something a bit different with the artwork compared to the last few albums that the band had put out. Um, and yeah, inspiration came from all over the place, I think. Like people just kept seeing random bits of art pop up, like even in, mm. in the streets and stuff. And all these sort of little like, nuggets of inspiration came um, that were all handed over to Dan. And then uh, I think we were all completely blown away by what he's made, though. Yeah, I mean, he must have like, not slept for about four months <laughs> that's what it felt like every day he was just showing us these epic masterpieces tiny bits of improvements and like more tweaks and like more sort of extra levels of detail and stuff so yeah yeah it's really, really really fun to work with him and I imagine we'll be doing lots more stuff with him in the future mm. yeah Dan Goldsworthy um, yeah as an artist I came across um, from you know being a fan of like death metal music he's kind of more known for doing death and thrash metal covers but um, yeah, I became friends with him, and uh, you know, he it turned out he was a Haken fan, and it, it, he's just the kind of guy that just uh, just gets where you're coming from, right? You, you you can just give him. We gave him the songs and the, the lyrics and a kind of like loose idea of what we kind of wanted, and he just kind of we just left him to it, and he he created this amazing piece of work. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, that's 
it's really kind of his artwork, which is the, the best thing, really. You know, it's like a, I don't think you want to be telling the artist too much what to do because it, it's, then it's kind of not their artwork anymore. So it's yeah. yeah it's from a, my from my perspective, I saw what he did on your solo album, and we were all blown away by that. <laughs> and we th we thought we wanted to um, utilize his talents. And yeah, that's that's. On I our mean, record yeah, well. I mean, I could see you know even though he's known for like the death stuff, I could see like he he would be able to do yeah. anything you know you can throw any style at him <clears throat> and and he'll he can do it and it's um yeah so we had this kind of uh i don't know how you would describe it like a kind of victorian kind of gentleman's club room kind of idea <laughs> and we would we thought it would be funny to kind of make that um uh, like you know instead of victorian people have victorian animals take their place um so it's this kind of strange uh, kind of bizarre world where uh, animals are in charge. They're, they're kind of uh, <laughs> the higher classes. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I think it came out great. It's like, you know, oh, yeah. It makes me laugh and <laughs> amazes me at the same time. Never hold the sea.